Welcome to the Leadership Lounge, a place to kick back and listen as our experts dissect some of the biggest questions leaders face today. I'm Emma Coombe, Managing Director in our London office. And in today's episode, I'm really excited to be talking about how to accelerate your leadership journey after a career break, something that's affecting more and more of us. There are many reasons why people choose to take a career break. Historically, we may have associated it with women taking time out on maternity leave. But in reality, there's a whole load of reasons why men and women want to take time away from paid work. We've seen recently how the global pandemic caused a huge period of reflection. It left many leaders questioning what was important. And for many, this meant taking a career break, taking time away from their typical nine to five role. Of course, there are many others who take time for their mental health or to care for elderly or sick relatives or simply to have a sabbatical and some time away. I read recently on LinkedIn, for example, that 62% of all employees worldwide have taken a career break at some point. Yet, despite it becoming more and more common in today's business landscape, there's still a stigma associated with taking time away. And that means that many still brush their career breaks under the carpet during executive interviews. The fact is that it is entirely possible to re-enter the executive world with confidence. And today, we'll be talking to some of our leadership advisors who share how to do just that. After all, taking the time away doesn't cause your skill set to stagnate. In fact, research has proven it's just the opposite, a time of huge growth where you learn new skills. But just before we dive in, remember to share any burning questions you want our leadership advisors to answer by emailing redefiners at russellreynolds.com. We look forward to hearing from you. Well, it's time to speak to some of our experts. First up, we'd like to welcome Sarah Galloway, a leadership advisor at Russell Reynolds Associates London office. Sarah, it's lovely to have you in the lounge with us today. In your role, you're meeting leaders day in, day out. What do you think leaders can learn from taking a career break? I think when it comes to how we talk about taking a career break, there needs to be some reframing. Many people still think of it as time off. However, often this time away from the typical work setting is a period of huge growth and learning. Whether you're caring for a child or elderly relative or going on a sabbatical, these are times that really mould you as a leader. It can teach you patience and resilience, which are important and desirable leadership qualities. When the time comes when you want to or need to come back to work and you begin interviewing for positions, it's really important that you don't speak critically or are in any way ashamed or apologetic of taking that time away. Frame it positively because it's a huge learning curve and it means that you bring another completely different perspective on things. Definitely, Sarah. I think this piece around not speaking critically or being ashamed is is so important. It's role modelling for others. And in a way, it's reflecting the truth because returning to the workplace is thinking about what you've learned and how you can best harness these skills. LinkedIn had a recent report showing that over half of people who took a career break said they ended up better at their jobs than before. Really not what we'd expect to hear, but actually if we stopped and reflected, it makes complete sense. In fact, over two thirds of people said it helped them gain perspective and figure out what they wanted from life. And I was so pleased to see in 2021 when LinkedIn changed its platform and added stay-at-home parent as a job title. And then in 2022, it added career break. And adding these categories, it's so important. It means that leaders can represent their experiences more authentically. And it also means, for example, with corporates that are investing heavily in these fabulous return to work programs, they can now target groups that otherwise might be underrepresented. So to speak from my own personal experience, I have been lucky enough to have three children and therefore I've taken three maternity leaves and come back three times from maternity leave. And in truth, that was never easy. I always found coming back a loss of confidence. I think that's entirely human, but also the feeling that having been in the circle of trust, somebody's probably usurped you, they're more in the flow, your boss probably trusts them more at that point in time. So my reflection now is making sure for other colleagues who are taking time out that they are really well supported, that they feel at peace both going off on leave, but also coming back. I'm so lucky to love what I do. And it gave me a real appreciation of the stimulation that you get from work, the social interaction, the the dynamic atmosphere that you're part of. And so for me, being away 
really made me realise how much I get out of work. I missed it. It's such a stimulating atmosphere, great, great colleagues to work with. And talking about career breaks and specifically the value this kind of experience can bring to either appreciating your workplace or doing your role better, I would now like to introduce Shun Lim. Shun, you're a leadership advisor in our Singapore office. It's great to have you here. Perhaps you could answer for us how leaders can harness the value from taking time away from work. Opportunities actually present great learning experiences for all of us. So the first thing I would say is review the time that you've taken off uh, from your career and really think about what knowledge and experiences from taking that time off you have gained that is actually valuable and transferable uh, back into uh, the workplace today. Do not discount those experiences and say, okay, that's a career break and that was nothing I had gained or grown as a person. Exactly. Whether you've been out of the job market for two years or, or 10 years, it's likely that your perspective has changed in a really valuable way, as well as the market changing around you. We've got another leadership advisor who wants to chime in on this topic, David Lang from our New York office. David, how important for you is it to keep pace with the market changes and keep your ears to the ground whilst you take a break? So in our experience, as leaders return to the workforce from often a hiatus, it could be a gap year, could be a sabbatical, it could actually be a complete reinvention of their career path. We find that there are a couple of things that they need to focus on in order to make themselves as ready as possible for the return to the job market. The first one is really around keeping their skills refreshed. What we've noticed is that, of course, the work world is constantly in change and transformation. And the best leaders, when they're in their roles, are always keeping themselves fresh, keeping their skills sharp. This is even more important for leaders who leave and return to a role or who leave one industry and return to a different industry, that they really have the freshest possible set of skills available to them for when they re-enter the job market to hit the ground running and to have the biggest impact as quickly as possible. Um, the other thing that we believe that they need to really do is, is keep abreast of the trends of the future. So it's not just keeping their skill set current, but actually starting to think about what's next. We've seen a lot of disruption with chat GPT and AI, and this is impacting every industry sector, every role, every geography. So topics like this are really important for leaders to be smart on and to understand the implication on themselves and their leadership as they return to work. We've also seen leaders do a complete reinvention of themselves. A lot of uh, track record of for-profit leaders moving into nonprofit or social impact organizations. Leaders changing roles, changing functions, changing geographies, changing industry sectors. This is something that we see um, increasingly popular and increasingly available to leaders as career paths have become more transversal over time, it's not really about just getting better at the one thing you do, but it's about creating breadth in your career. So the broader your career path, the more options you have when you return to the workforce. You make some really interesting points, David, especially around just how much can change in an industry or a company in one year, let alone if you've been away for longer. So having your finger on the pulse when it comes to understanding what has changed is key. And if that's been hard for you while you've been away, making sure that your organisation is set up to support you and quickly getting back up the learning curve. We'd now like to welcome our final guest, Stephanie Tommaso, into the Leadership Lounge. Stephanie is a much appreciated leadership advisor from our Washington office. Stephanie, what steps can leaders take to prepare themselves to re-enter the working environment? I think one of the most important things is to first really spend some time reflecting on what is it that you want to do when you come back into a, a new career role. Um, you don't need to automatically assume you're going to go back to doing whatever it was that you were, were working at professionally two, three, seven years ago, whatever it was when you left the market. Um, you know, what are the skills you want to be able to utilize and what are the types of roles that might be able to allow you to flex those muscles? And then think about where are the organizations that you can go to do that. Um, when you're meeting with prospective employers, I think it's really important to be honest about the time that, that you were out of the market. You know, this is the choice that I made. It was a really positive experience for me to be with my parents, whatever it was that you were doing, um, and how that was meaningful to you, as opposed to trying to change the narrative for some reason. And for so many women who, you know, had changes as a result of COVID, I think that, you know, so many employers right now understand 
you know, your your company downsized, the the, the job options changed, and, and just telling the story honestly about that is really important. And lastly, you know, really be unafraid to leverage your network and think about all the people that you know from your personal life, from your professional life, you know, maybe back in college, whatever it was, who might be able to help you down the path to um, find that next opportunity. Thank you, Stephanie. Leveraging your network is absolutely key and something that you can either choose to maintain during a period away from work, or you can choose to reconnect with people when you feel ready to re-enter the work environment. I know this topic is close to another one of our leadership advisors, Jenna Fisher. In her book, To the Top, she talks about how networking is one of the secrets to getting more women in leadership positions. It doesn't matter how you choose to network, whether it's through LinkedIn messaging, email, picking up the phone, or approaching someone at an event. But having the courage to take that initiative and connect is so incredibly valuable. You also need to be honest and upfront about what you hope to get from this connection. So being prepared and thoughtful is really important. It's all about workplaces making sure that there's coaching available, mentoring, inclusion groups, that the workplace is an environment that can have open discussions around challenges that returnees might be facing into. And I'm really excited to see lots of big name companies like Microsoft, Accenture and IBM offering really structured return to work programs particularly for people who might have taken a longer extended period of time out of the workplace. These include training, mentoring sessions and support from a peer network. And I think it's fabulous that at last these kind of programs are now becoming really well established. And of course, we mustn't forget that getting leaders back into post is great for businesses too and can help solve particularly the skills shortage. Our Global Leadership Monitor, a report that tracks key threats to organisational health, this year revealed that 73% of leaders were concerned about the availability of key talent and skills. When organisations develop these programmes to reintroduce leaders with loads of relevant experience, these gaps will really start to be filled in a meaningful way. Our time in the Leadership Lounge today has come to an end. In 30 seconds, here's what we've learnt. Talk honestly and openly about your career break. It's nothing to be ashamed of, and in fact, it's probably broadened your perspectives. Take the time to reflect on what you truly want from your next role and how you can add value. Leverage your network when you re-enter the job market. And don't undersell yourself. Time away from work is meaningful and has helped shape who you are today. For more dynamic insights from our leaders, listen to Leadership Lounge wherever you get your podcasts. And if you have any topics or burning questions you'd like us to cover in future episodes, then please get in touch. Email your questions to redefine us at russellreynolds.com or you can find us on LinkedIn and follow us on Twitter at RRA on Leadership. Until the next time, goodbye.